Guys, have you ever blown up your pizza bowls, left them at room temperature for too long, came back and they're a bit of a disaster? That's exactly what I did. I decided to make a video to see if it was recoverable and see if I could make good pizza from these dough balls anyway. The results are quite intriguing. I think you'll be surprised. Please keep watching. Hello guys, welcome to TRW Pizza. Welcome back. Here I am with my unfeasibly large tin of tomatoes. Unicode is 16 and actually interestingly a new drink which for anyone who loves all things Italian like myself I've never drank this before but this is called Cino um, and it is made from the Cinotto oranges in southern Italy they're small oranges I believe and it's it's got a very interesting taste I highly recommend trying it out by the way if you haven't seen that before anyway today I'm going to be talking about the fact that I blew up some pizza dough accidentally. So I essentially made four pizza balls of 260 grams, 66% hydration, and cut them up, put them out on the bench. They should always go into the fridge about an hour after I've made them into the balls. I was expecting to um, then cook them 20 hours later. However, I got massively sidetracked uh, and came back in the house later, realized I had not put them in the fridge whatsoever. They'd been left out in room temperature for about seven hours, which was completely unplanned and a bit of a disaster. I've made a video of me when I found that out. Um, and yeah, let me show you how that dough looks like right now. So here you go. This is the dough in the uni stack. It isn't looking very pretty. Basically, it's been in the fridge now for the number it's actually been out in the fridge now for 48 hours um, this one's looking not quite so bad because it didn't stick to the lid same with the one below but essentially what I've got is a small problem a small challenge is the one that because I, I only have one only stack so I can put three doubles in it the other one went into this bowl here and you can basically see it's got a different look to, to my dough normally it'd normally be a little bit more consistent in its um, not so moon like not so many craters it would be smoother it wouldn't have had all these undulations in it because it's blown up with the heat of being in room temp temperature for such a long time and then there was so much bubbling so overblown then it settled back down in the fridge and yeah left these yeah pretty unflattering um, remnants. Now what I'm interested to do is just look at how recoverable this is. I've never had this exact situation before so I'm always trying to teach you guys um, how to negotiate certain challenges with pizza making so you don't have to learn for yourself you can learn from me. So here's a here's a mistake in mine made a, a challenge I've set myself and I'm gonna now show you how I cook it and how the pizzas turn out. Hopefully they're good but it might be a disaster Let's find out. Guys, if you like this, please spend three seconds to like and subscribe. It's really appreciated. And uh, yeah, let's go and cook these pizzas. Find out how they look. And for a bit of pre-context, here are the dough balls that I was so excited about making into wonderful pizza. And I'm now going to show you the video of when I came home and discovered that, to my horror, I left these dough balls out on the bench for seven hours in room temperature when I intended to put them in the fridge and they blew up. Let's take a look at that now. So this is what happens when you forget to put your dough in the fridge. Look at that. I guess it's an opportunity to do a video on what you do in this situation, but that's highly annoying. It'd be interesting to know if this is recoverable. Oh God. Well, we know that yeast is active anyway. So the night is drawing in, it's a bit dark, I've got the lights on. Um, let me take you through what I'm actually going to do. I'm doing it outside. I haven't got a huge amount of faith these pizzas are going to be okay, so I'm putting kind of the bare minimum uh, 
together in terms of ingredients. I've got uh, muti, uh, cherry tomatoes here with a dash of sea salt. I've got my olive oil to drizzle, some hard mozzarella, I've just chopped that up, some parmigiano regano, some fresh basil from the balcony, some buffalo mozzarella, and the four um, pizza balls, which I'm about to start making the pizza with. Obviously, I've got a bit of Tipo 00 to land the, the pizzas in as I put them on the pastry mat. I've got my uni turning peel here, and, uh, and I've got my uni 16 ready to go. And I've got a very strong espresso, strong enough to knock your socks off just because it's been one of those days and um, it's gonna help. So let's, uh, let's get cracking. That's good, let's not drop the espresso into the, uh, into the tomato sauce. Excellent. So I'm gonna move this across. tend to like a fair amount of Tipo 00 flour to land the pizza in because as you probably have seen from my how to get the perfect launch video I really try and avoid any wet dough on the uh, on the peel at all so I make sure that when the dough comes out which I'll show you in a second I cover each side comprehensively with that flour so here's the first dough ball coming together. The good thing about these uni stacks is that they do make sure that the dough ball itself stays round. So it's not like I'm going to be dealing with a uh, hexagonal dough ball or something like this. So I have some faith it might come out looking pizza pizza shaped, but I also don't know if the fact to let it proof at room temperature for such a long time. I mean, look at this, look at this bubbling up right now. I don't know if the fact to left it room temperature for such a long time, it's going to actually have an effect on the pizza dough itself as it cooks, things like this. This is uncharted pizza territory for me. So we just have to see how it goes. The dough ball goes onto the Tipo 00. And it goes. So it looks fairly round. It's not a complete disaster just yet. It's going to be a very different consistency that I'm used to. Normally I need to do a little bit of stretching, but I think this is going to need very little. It's going to be highly compliant because it's had that extra time, both at room temperature and in the fridge. Remember I said this is, this has been 48 hours in the fridge since I had that seven hours at room temperature. This, is, this has been an unusual proofing for TRW pizza. But it's very good to be adaptable and learn through these kind of mistakes. Tiny bit of Tipo 00 on the paddle there, not too much. I really don't want to get any coagulation of flour on the pizza stone, which ends up with scorching, burning, just unnecessary drama on the pizza stone itself. This is a slightly lighter weight of dough ball than I normally make. I've been using, I've been making 275 grams dough balls, but this is actually around 260. Just a little bit of experimentation to see if it changes the overall dynamic of the pizza I'm making. I like to mix things up a bit. Okay, already that's quite a good size actually. Because I'm dealing with a pizza which is a little bit unknown, I'm going to build the toppings on the paddle itself. This means I'm a lot less likely to have issues dragging it onto the, the paddle if there is 
it's extremely elastic dough, for example. What it goes, the sauce that is, don't overdo the sauce, always keep it conservative in that regard. On goes the parmigiano. Don't overdo the parmigiano. Always keep it conservative in that regard. On goes the dried mozzarella. Don't overdo the dried mozzarella. Less is more, I tend to think. Everyone's different. Some people really like to stack up their pizza toppings. I just think it, it gets too much both for the pizza itself, in terms of its aesthetics, in terms of the way it cooks, but also in terms of how it sits in the stomach. One goes the DOP mozzarella de buffalo. I'm just going to interject re-watching this video at this point. I need to underline how surprised I am this pizza's coming to get together pretty nicely. I thought it was going to be a lot more challenging than it's turning out to be. Um, so all positive so far. Let's see how the cook turns out. Onward. Okay, you see? Here, it's sticking slightly. That's where. I need to just lift that slightly. That should lubricate it nicely. Yep, yeah, we're back into business. Tiny. Last stretch, pincers on the outside. Okay. It's looking okay, guys. On goes. Touch of olive oil, don't overdo it. Still moving nicely. Still round, which is great. Now let's get some light on the oven. It's not too hot actually, it's still them um, coming up to temperature. Here we go. And in it goes. Beautiful launch. A bit more light on the subject. The flame is high guys, so I need to be careful here. very quickly going to get hot at the back. So I'm going to move it almost immediately, as soon as it starts to set. You can see it's not bubbling up quite as quick right now because the heat isn't quite where it normally is. But it's still getting some size. spot in there. You might have seen my video on leopard spotting, check it out if you haven't. Yep, you see, I have to be careful here because the flame is high. And it will very quickly singe the pizza. Something good underneath. Here, if I'm worried that the bottom might get burnt, I'll just lift it slightly. And you know what? That is looking okay. Interesting. Let's bring it over to the dissection table. How's this looking? You know what? I think this is a great pizza. feel, irrespective of the fact that it was left at room temperature for such a long time, it's not impacted the um, eatability of it, and it hasn't actually impacted the, the way in which the dough can be manipulated and stretched. I mean, it's a beautiful round, round pizza. Let's um, 
with some more lighting it like this. That is nothing to scoff at. You see how easy that was and quick to throw together? Matter of minutes. And we're in it, even with that problematic dough. Happy with that. I'll do a couple more and I'll film it and show you if it's interesting. So as you can see, the main lesson here is if your dough blows up, don't give up hope. You can still make great pizza. It takes a little bit, you have to be a little bit more careful as you pry it out of the container onto the flour. But as long as you keep that shape round, you can recover it and make good pizza. It's a, it's a happy ending for this story. He was the one that was under the actual lid. So you can see the lid here. It bubbled up into it and got stuck. I'm going to try and cook that one and see if that's problematic. You can see normally that would be smooth here, but it's not. Um, let's see what the implications are on a practical basis. The uni's still heating up on full flame. You should be aware, guys, that when you cook on a pizza stone, like the Uni Coda 16 or any of the other mainstream home pizza ovens, actually, the uh, when you cook a pizza on them, the, the temperature goes down. So you need to be very careful that you don't assume, just because it was at 400 degrees, for example, it's still at 400 degrees. It, uh, the cooking process takes a lot of energy, a lot of heat out of those stones and you need to manage that. That's part of your job as the pizza maker to understand the science of the energy in a pizza stone. That's where a lot of people make mistakes because they think, oh, it was hot at the start, it must still be hot. It isn't, and then it gives, you know, not as good a rise because the heat isn't there, or it gives scorching because you heat it too much. Just be aware of those dynamics. You can see the interesting phenomena on here. You know, a conspiracy theorist would quite happily look at this and say it's some kind of uh, Mayan temple on the surface of the moon. But no, it's just my overproof pizza. Again, I'm going to put this straight onto the peel for its toppings for the reasons said before. I don't want any surprises if I move it across to the peel when the toppings are on there. If it was a less risky pizza, i.e. the dough was fine, I wouldn't be doing that. I'd be putting the toppings on while it was on the actual. While it was on the peel. One. Normally about one and a half, one and a quarter, depending on the size of the pizza. Large spoons of dirt, of um, sauce. Oh, process failure. Small amount of parmigiano. Good. Some more DOP buffalo mozzarella or mozzarella di buffalo, as it should be referred to. A beautiful homegrown basil. If you can grow your own basil, I highly recommend it. Something about the fact that you've nurtured it yourself, I swear it gives you a more powerful flavour when you pick it off the stem in the first person and put it on your pizza within about five minutes. Great feeling. Still moving nicely on the peel here. Again, a little bit of an extra stretch. Oh.
Happy. Let's cook it. Yeah, I'm happy with this. Flame down means less chance of scorching. Well, and right to the back. Flew off. Tell you what, this is turning out to be an easier pizza cooking session than I thought it was going to be, to be completely honest with you. It's rising quite a lot there because there aren't much toppings on it. Kind of my mistake. I was a little bit sparse with the toppings there. Need to get it away from the flame as soon as possible now because it's very close. I'm just going to sheepishly bring it forward. That worked well, it's starting to rise nicely. Let's get the other side exposed to the temperature. See it growing nicely. Oh yeah. Wow, I'm really, uh, really pleased. This is not turning out to be a problematic cook whatsoever. So it's a good lesson for me. Just because you have a bit of a faux pas and forget to put your dough in the fridge early enough, it doesn't mean it's game over. And by the way, this was the dough ball, remember, that it got stuck to the lid of the uni stack. So this was actually the one that had the most potential challenge to it. And it's a great, great pizza. Very happy with it. And I didn't have to do any remolding of the ball. I just got it out as it was. Managed it pretty much in the same way that I normally do. And it gave a great result. Guys, I hope you found this useful. I certainly found it interesting. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. So pizza number four has just come out the uni. As you will see, all four look good. They look like they're gonna taste good. They're round. And in general, I think it's fair to say there was no issues with the dough in the end. Cheers guys, see you next time.